Greetings, nerds. This is Satan Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Hang in, in there, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, but I'm not calling. I'm not doing this from North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we uh, we are, unfortunately, the western part of our state did. Uh, you've probably seen in the news um, where the uh, <clears throat> western North Carolina got uh hit along with several other states like Florida and Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Southwest Virginia, uh, Eastern Tennessee. Uh, we all got impacted by uh, Hurricane Helene. Um, it was, but uh, we, North Carolina, we, I think we definitely got the uh, the worst of it. Um, you know, a lot of our communities in, in the Western part of the state are still, are still cut off. And, um, you know, this is this just, a, I mean, it's, it's not hyperbole uh, to say it's like biblical proportions as far as you know, of some of the devastation and, and loss of life that we've, that we've had here. So um, I, I wanted to use this opportunity to, you know, uh, you know, many of our listeners may be in some of the impacted areas. Um, if you, if you are, are able to get an internet right now, cause I mean, even that's like cut off, but uh, if we can, you know, hopefully you can enjoy us, uh, us talking about some just things to get your minds off of, of what's happened. Um, but also uh, for folks who are, are looking to, to help, uh, because uh, this is, uh, you know, we're, we're still in the early stages. I mean, we're still in the response mode, quite frankly. I mean, they're still plucking, you know, rescuing people from areas that have been cut off and getting resources and food and water and, you know, commodities to, to areas that's been uh, hit. But, um, you know, if you if you do, well, I'll be sure to put these links in our in our show notes. But uh, it, for North Carolina, at least um, uh, you can go to my agency where I work. Um, we're uh, I do work in emergency management and uh, uh, we're we, you know, we, we definitely can use all the help and resources. And if you want to find ways to, to volunteer or donate money. Uh, and find out of information about, you know, friends or loved ones who, who may have been impacted by by this event. You can go to uh, ncdps.gov uh, backslash Helene. That's our that's our page where we have all our our central repository for all things uh, response to this this storm. Uh, also, the American Red Cross is is um, you know, a, a, one of many organizations that. Um, you can donate to uh, not only for for us here in North Carolina, but also the other impacted states. And uh, and the big thing that I could just you know share if you if you do want to donate um, or want to help out, please don't self deploy into the area, uh, and please don't just donate stuff randomly. Uh, that just creates a disaster within a disaster because uh, you know a lot of times if there's no one there to to receive it. Um, you know, then it it doesn't get to the people that can help, and also it just causes you know slows down the the, the response from from us as far as the state, but also all the non government organizations and other people who are on the ground helping to get things back people you know back on their feet out there. So, uh, but thank you all for you know for folks who are sending your thoughts and prayers to our state, and uh, we we greatly appreciate it and. I know it's you know I know we have fun on this on this podcast, but uh, just wanted to, to to share that just to sort of st- to kick off the episode this week. Um, I just because uh, I know a lot of people are probably wondering what they can do to help, and wanted to, to point you in a direction for for ways you can help us out in in this state and other states that were you know, that was impacted by Helene. Yeah, thank you. I I think that's a good use of time. Um, but I will I will bring us back to what we're what the listeners are here for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to have some fun too because it's been it's been some, it's been a rough ten days. <laughs> yeah, because while well, you're you're dealing all, all that and are in the trenches, uh, I've been just cleaning up shows. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> recently, I brought up the show Monsters. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I did I did end up watching it. Um, episode five was not what I expected it to be, but I heard something and I know why that's the episode that, that I will say, if you're curious about this show, but you're also like on the fence because of Ryan Murphy isms, (laughs) (laughs) I would watch that episode. Like at the end of the day, 
I think I think I'm not going to explain why in detail, not that it's anything shocking, but um, it is very simplistically brilliant um, what what that episode does. And and so my overall review of the show is that it starts off very weird like we're like I was saying the the week prior, I was kind of on the fence because right. of everything. And then it kind of in the middle, I got really sucked into it. And then by the end of it, it kind of went full circle and kind of ended the same way it started, where I'm just like, oh, because there's a lot of perspectives mm-hmm. um, that are shown. And I think I... I from my perspective as someone who really had no idea about this case before now, mm-hmm. I can see why Ryan Murphy presented it the way he did with all of the uh, perspectives. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not because the case itself is not the typical case. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, we're not we're not saying they didn't kill their parents. That's not what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> they did, <laughs> but the whole answer to the why, mm-hmm. um, and 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 that, um, and and I know I haven't done too much any research to see like, well, what did he leave out or is being currently accused by the Mendez family of having left off, left out? Um, but at the end of the day, the guy is trying to make a show. Like he's not necessarily going to go beat for beat and he's, he's going to try to capture it in an artistic way and bring out nuances and not get clogged down to, and then they had this witness and this witness said exactly this and this happened. It's like, no, there, there's a, it's, it is fiction to some degree. So I, yeah. So but overall, I think it's good. I still, it's not quite OJ, but I also, um, I think the middle is really strong. I did, funny story though, I yeah. did pull a me because there's an episode towards the end that is fully focused on the parents mm-hmm. and like how they met and everything. And I skipped it. I skipped <laughs> it because I wanted to like there was momentum with the present day storyline and I wanted to get back to that. So after I finished it, I went back to that episode and I put that on. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's funny you mentioned episode five. So um, I, you know, just try, as I'm trying to like, just get back into the, the new cycle of th- other things in the world. Um, I, I did just happen to see some of the stuff about episode five and, and, and some of the, um, I guess, Ryan Murphy's comments. And uh, I think Kim Kardashian came out tonight, um, you know, really asking the LADA's office to, uh, to, to really examine uh, re-examine some of the evidence, particularly, I guess, the issues about, you know, I mean, I remember, I think one of the the whys they said they that, um, that the brothers did this was because they were you know, sexually abused by their father, um, and and so uh, you know I haven't watched the show uh, obviously, but uh, uh, but I, you know I have seen some of the the recent uh, comments and, and, and media that dro- has dropped this this evening as it relates to 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 that fifth episode that you just shared um, some details about so. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I even I just saw the variety of headline. Ryan Murphy predicts the Menendez brothers be out of jail by Christmas. So, you know, uh, it could happen. A lot of people have been yeah. very swayed by it. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and I can understand why to a mm-hmm. degree. Um, but there's another side of me is like, well. He he had to make them a hero to it. Like he's telling a story. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. I also I watched I binged the and I didn't know this. Okay, it's the new Adam Brody and Kristen um, Bell show mm-hmm. on on Netflix. Nobody wants this. Okay. Very advertised. Very standard like typical Netflix movie. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's emphasis on movie. That's what I thought this was. No, no, no. It's a show. Huh, really? <laughs> it's a legit show. Um, that is actually the I believe. Um, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Written and produced by the wife of Jason Biggs. Really? Okay. Huh. And it's to some extent based on their relationship. Um, huh. I I thought I was just gonna be like, oh, this is all right, something like like an Emily in Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like this show. Huh. Um, I like this show not just because like Kristen and and um, Adam Brody, like they both have chemistry together, mm-hmm. uh, but it's more of the chemistry with the the um, Adam Brody's character's brother and Kristen Bell's sister and the families and the <laughs> the the supporting cast it really becomes a fuller war- world than just these two people who are um, are meeting at a later stage in life and trying to figure things out. Um, and they also did a really good job of making it clear how much these two connect, mm-hmm. but at the same time, the stakes for if they can actually like fully commit um and so this we're talking about an adult real relationship Mm. (laughs) which is a rarity on screen if we're yeah yeah so i um i was really impressed by it by it like don't get me wrong still a lot of fluff (laughs) a lot of like (laughs) you can predict but Mm. i was i was caught off guard by the end of it i was like i actually enjoyed my my time um with it and and I really the supporting cast and um, they they did a good job for it being a season one, leaving you with some resolution mm-hmm. while simultaneously being like, well, we better get a season two because you got you got too many open doors here. Okay, I need yeah, yeah. I need to know not just what's happening with this relationship, but there's this other thing going on with the sister and the brother, the brother who's also married. And you would think, well, okay, then his wife's the villain. No, you actually end up, you kind of like her too. And it's just, they, they, they did a good job of um, building a world um, that you want to go back to. Okay. and spend more time in so huh. yeah so cool. so i got through that very easy binge i i don't even think it's 10 episodes oh, um okay. i could be okay. wrong about that and i'm pretty sure like half hour episodes too okay oh well that's even easy, easier to get through yeah for sure exactly i was i yeah. was just getting them over with <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, and then i recently started because i sometimes and listeners know this about me the for you stuff just like comes at me and i'm like fine i give in i'll actually check this thing out because i feel like i hear about it every five minutes with with some sort of ad but right now on hulu season two of this show has been airing and i just feel like it's being crammed down my my throat so i finally started um tell me lies which Mm. is um how do i put this the R-rated version of, I don't know, a Gossip Girl, a One Tree Hill, um, mm. but definitely R-rated. I was surprised by how, R- like, don't get me wrong, it's not, <clears throat> it's not extremely, but I'm just like, man, we, it's TBMA. <laughs> scene is like, every yeah. other scene is somebody trying to fuck, and you see others, like, 10 minute long kissing scenes, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I started it we'll see if i can get through the first season um and stick it out to get through the second season but but yeah so and on top of that i've just been keeping up with um the two shows that we're about to talk about tonight so yeah awesome. yeah yeah what well, we're gonna start with agatha all along we're just doing episode three the that is called Through many miles of tricks and trials, the coven faces their first perilous trial on the witch's road. Okay. So, Will. Yeah. 
this episode in a way kind of pissed me off because hmm. I was watching it and I was like, I really like Mrs. Hart. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then by the end of it, they kill her. Now I know, I know there, there's a part of me that's like, she's not dead. Yeah. Um, you can't but, kill Deborah Joe Repoff. I mean, she's like probably the best character on the show other than Agatha. <laughs> like, like seriously. I, I mean, they get onto the road, and she's like, I'm pretty sure this is what we call kidnapping. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's just, you you need her. And I also just find it weird watching a Disney Plus show when they kill someone who's not going to eventually come back to life, you know? It's yep. just rarity for that to happen. Um, so, but but overall... I think the first two episodes were a bit stronger, but Mm -hmm. there's still consistency. And oh, yeah. Okay. Now let's let's put Mrs. Hart aside um, for the table. Like like we have her on a pedestal, but and they did do something and start a thread that I was a not expecting, and b was very impressed by. Um, and it's the whole Agatha having a child mm, yeah. and having what they say, give up that child in exchange for the book of the dam. And why I was so impressed by this is because WandaVision was all about Wanda using her powers mm-hmm. to create the nuclear family, mm-hmm. to have children, to, to like, live in this world and and they're right they started this seed that agatha did the opposite mm-hmm. and and i i don't believe there was any notion of that in wandavision but i think it's a really smart thing to do considering this is a spin-off and although wanda isn't necessarily in the show her presence is really strong and she still is, to an extent, a foil for Agatha and vice versa. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, as you were as you were talking about that, I completely agree. I thought about that too. That, that you, you said it perfectly. I mean, they are, they are. You know, she is a foil of of uh, Wanda, and um, I, that that was uh, when I was watching an episode. I, I I had a similar similar reaction to to that about the um, uh, her trading her child for for the book and but all it and 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 to your point about consistency it, it is a, it's a it's a consistent with what we know about Agatha and 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 this and 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 why all the other uh, why the other three uh, witches uh you know have 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 shared their concern you know all their their concerns about her and her selfishness and other things and even like as as we saw in this episode while you know everybody else is you know the the, the real housewives of uh, eastwick or west westview were like um you know doing their thing um you know agatha uh was again you know pouring pouring the wine out and you know not drinking it so uh all those things together just really you know i thought I agree with you. I think the first two episodes were stronger, but this, but I have to say, this was a good episode. I, I have not been let down by this series so far, and it's actually a nice to have a series that, you know, is a really a self-contained story about what's going on and in, in, with with Agatha and 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 these witches as they are on this on the on the road, uh, instead of having it you know have it spill off into the larger MCU. Right, right. I mean, granted, they did do a Mephisto reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, as soon as I saw that, <laughs> I laughed out loud when I saw that. They're like, yep. You know, but I think this is the first time in canon MCU that they actually have used the name. I know they've danced around it because, of, you know, and then they were like, okay, well, we're going to throw you guys a bone <laughs> after all these years. And now everyone and their mother is still casting or have just started casting Mephisto. Yeah. Because yeah, like, Sasha Perry and Cohen. Yeah, you said, <laughs> said the name, so we better get there. I, yeah. I just a spoiler alert. By the time we get there, y'all, Mephisto is just gonna let us all down. Yep. I just, I, I just, there's something about it where if it goes, if the seed is left un, 
bloomed for too long, it's like it just disappoints by the time we actually get there. So or maybe or maybe they're doing the slow game. I don't know. But um, a part of this is also. Well, she gave up her kid and to Mephisto, if I heard correctly, Mm -hmm. and and so potentially he could still have the kid. The kid could be the kid on the show, even mm-hmm. though it's highly unlikely. Um, it's more likely that it's Wanda's kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but then again, but which which still works because of what we just were talking about with Wanda and Agatha, like yeah. being these really good foils for one another. Yeah. And um, I I keep thinking about that scene where she sees the crib. Like she mm-hmm. has a hallucination and she un- like removes it and then sees the book. Yeah. And, and something that you said, like we, we, everyone knows how much Agatha wants, like craves power and needs it. And it, it, it fulfills her, but I'm trying to think if maybe they're getting like by using this, this or planning, starting this thread, it's like, but if she sacrificed her kid for the power, it's almost like she has to have it Mm -hmm. and more of it in order to make that sacrifice like worth it. But Mm -hmm. ultimately on the end of the day, like it's never going to balance. Like her scales will never balance. Yeah, yeah, I compl- Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah, it's it's. I we'll we'll see how far they go. I mean, we've just started on this, um, but if they they get any more nuances um, with that whole storyline, um, but overall, I mean, besides Mrs. Mrs. Hart, or even with Mrs. Hart. Like the over, the coven itself, um, it it is like watching a a housewives show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's the other thing too. I mean, they are you know that's uh, another thing that they're just going to consistently like do. I think the rest of this series, which is to play off of other things in pop culture and yeah. and, and TV shows, you know, various various like. Uh, inspirations uh, because you know we had sort of like the you know the, this this house was that they come across all, all, when they had this this trial was like a very you know New England you know middle you know, suburban middle class you know place and, um, and 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 you know whenever they like you know go into it and they go in and it's got a clothes change and and you know so this is the whole vibe about it was really really. Uh, enjoyable but also um you know with the other ladies and the witches in the coven you know they, we 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 do, we get more about their stories and their backgrounds especially when they drink the wine and have the you know, have the have the flashbacks as far as various things in their past um you know with Jen and the uh and the doctor and um uh Lila with the um Let's see, she was well, see, she had the um, you know, the you know, I guess she, I guess whenever the teen was talking to her about her her mother, I guess you know, she had her issues with her mother, or am I, is, her, is that Lila or is that the other? Lady? It's been remember. a while since I've watched this episode, yeah. so I will admit I still have yet to really place names with faces, yeah, yeah, uh, but but yeah, they are they are making sure that. It, it starts to become somewhat of an ensemble um, yeah. with crew. Still don't know how long we'll be on the road. That's that's currently my big question right now. How many episodes can they, pun intended, stretch this road for? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, there's we're already episode three. We got five left. So, yeah. um, you know. So, and I think they, I think they did say, if I recall, there's three trials. I see. I don't even remember how many trials. I felt like there was a trial for each each one of the witches okay. and their talent. But yeah. so I don't I don't know. But yeah. but I, I I don't 
I think there'll be at least one episode at the end where we're not on the road. Mm-hmm. Hopefully more. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I, I think the, I think the road is see because again the the path is the is we'll probably get off the we'll probably at the penultimate episode is where we'll finally get off the path because the, you know because they got to set up for the whatever the big finale is going to be. Um, you know, because it is, at the end of the day, it's still a Marvel show, so we're going to have that. Well, that, we can that what the big, fin- big finale is going to be. It's going to be her conf- um, confronting the Salem Five or Salem Seven, yeah. whoever yeah. So, it was. And yeah. Audrey Plaza will be back. Like right, right. And to that, I'm glad you brought that that up. So along along the way, you know, so this episode of the Salem Five, the Salem Seven, or whatever, were not uh, involved at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, but there are going. There is going to be a place where, where you know, those witches are going to be able to you know, come down on the path as well. So, so it's, it's only a matter of time, whether it's next week or, uh, or week or episode five. Well, I guess episode four, which just aired yesterday. I know we're we're a week behind, but uh, as of our of recording, but um, yeah. So th- those those folks do have to get reintroduced into the story because we, we they can't be put on the shelf until you know until the penultimate. Right, right. You 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 heard that, writers. You can't do that to Will, okay? <laughs> no, you cannot. That. No, you cannot. <laughs> yeah. Which was what? What was your initial thoughts about the episode, The Inside Man? Yeah. So moving to the Penguin, The Inside Man. So, um, you know, this was episode two of the series, and I really, you know, sometimes you'll have the soft, the proverbial sophomore slump. But I did not feel that way with this episode. So I initially watched it on Sunday evening. Um, you know, it was pretty tired, but I really enjoyed it then. Um, I did watch it again this evening just to just to uh, help me fill in the gaps of things. I was like, no, what happened again? <laughs> um, but mm-hmm. it definitely like I, I I'm I'm rocking with this series. I I am thoroughly enjoying. We're the penguin. I mean, we're we're eating well in October right now as far as shows, uh, which is and um, and the 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 thing the story that um, they're telling with Oz, um, you know, I, I talked about this last week as far as this impulse control, uh, which is to me it's a double edged sword for me it seems because on the one hand, his impulse control gets him into situations where like. You know, where he kills Alberto, but at the same time, uh, that impulse control or, you know, it, it is a strength for him as far as channeling that thinking on his feet whenever things go sideways, as as, as we saw uh, in this episode where, uh, jumping to, to the end, uh, you, know, you know, Vic wasn't able to execute the plan that they had formulated. And then he had to think there on his feet, like, how am I going to get out of this situation before I get, before I get killed here uh that they discovered that i was the one um behind killing uh evard the uh the, the uh maroni um person that they had down in the basement yeah this episode was good and i agree with you that um both between both shows were in terms of content eating well um i wasn't i'm not as high on this episode as i was on the initial episode because it it kind of it felt a little the same like he's still trying to avoid or still trying to make sure that nobody points their fingers at him in -hmm. terms of the death for Alberto Mm -hmm. um so and and I think that what detracted me um was that the first episode we were we were with at Oz from start to finish mm-hmm. and this episode had a lot more to do there there were it, it felt like a regular tv show from the extent that like there were a lot of scenes with um Sophia mm-hmm. and Sophia's uncle and and so they're they're fleshing out her storyline um especially yeah. in terms of her being released from from Arkham, which is where we start in this episode. Yeah. Um, and then there's there's a scene at the funeral where she's greated by a cousin and whose daughter comes over and 
And initially the cousin seems happy to see her, her cousin. And then quickly it's like, no, 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 you're not allowed around my kid because yeah. you're the hangman. So, so they're starting to um, give, an, get, give us more of an understanding about what Sophia did to get mm -hmm. her locked up. Yeah. Um, and also her mental fragile state. Um, yeah. Because there's even the awkward scene where she wakes up in the closet and comes out and clearly was it while was sleeping was trying to strangle herself of some sort because she had scratches on her neck. So, yeah, so she's yeah. she's still maybe hopped up on some Arkham pills or something. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm glad. Yeah, one of the things I did like about what they did with Sophia this episode, the. the um, it, the, ex the good use of exposition with the radio, um, you know, to sort of fill it, you know, so we got, we understood she was the hangman. We know that she did bad things, but then they sort of teased it out a little bit more this episode with the, you know, whenever they had the, uh, discussing that she was a female, you know, serial killer and talked about how many women she had murdered and, um, and, and also, like you said, I mean, just her relationship with the, with her family and, and also even like, you know, I think, you know, when I had the reception there for, for, for Alberto's funeral, you know, all, what I really liked about that, that scene, as far as like, you know, all the, all the whispers about she's crazy, she's this, she's that. And then she played into it whenever she was like, you know, she was at the, at the buffet table where she grabbed the, 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 the food and she was just like, just, she heard all the whispers and all the people stuff. So she just played along with it. And like, at least that was how I read it, and and uh, she's like, okay, you know, well, yeah, I I hear what you guys are saying about me, and I'll just try, I'll just I'll buy into your narrative about me. Yeah, she she kind of did that in the first episode too when she was at lunch with Oz. Mm -hmm. I remember how she was eating. Mm -hmm. There is she she. It's almost that. I don't know if it's play plays into it, but it's more of like she likes making people feel uneasy, yeah. like or she was trying not to, and then she heard all the whispers and saw the stairs, and then she was like, "You're making me uneasy, so I'm just gonna do something that puts you on edge." Yeah, that, there's there's that aspect of it too. Yeah, yeah. That's and a good and point. I, I'm curious to understand why in both situations it's food, like yeah. because that I mean it's she's a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, she eats in this very and maybe it's because serial serial killers are often equated to animals, like yeah. they hunt for prey, and. Yeah you're eating in a ferocious way that makes it feel like you are an animal, a savage. I think so, that's it. So maybe, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And and now, um, because this episode, they're doing a good job with titles, as we always love to point out when, mm -hmm. when we recognize shows to do. Um, but so we knew at the end of the first episode that Oz is is working both sides. He's working yeah. Maroni's and he's working Falcone's side. And now, by the end of this episode, even though he fixed to some extent, because Nadia really did say she wanted her guy back, yeah. and technically he did not come back. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. So, so I don't know how much of a how. Um, how good that dynamic is between him and the Maronis anymore. But now on top of that, he's, he's even managed to find himself or I think intentionally find himself on team Sophia as she goes against the old guys in the Falcone family who see, seem to think that they can be running shots in place of her brother and her father. Um, and she's still there. So she, he's, he's, I guess what I'm getting at is um, as much as I, I do think this is a good show um, and it's well written, they, they seem to um, keep taking these scenarios and just putting Oz in like, it's, it's a weird, 
it's it's a weird game of chess and i don't know if it's chess yet like i don't know how to describe the game we're playing because yeah i i i mean i understand oz he's mm -hmm. he's the um character who i liked from um to an extent he is the character i i always brought up when we were watching uh shogun earlier oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yabu, Yabu Shige. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who arguably we shouldn't have liked. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. <laughs> but, but I was like, he's a survivalist. He's gonna go. Yep. He's gonna be. Fr he doesn't care. Like loyalty is not that important. Yep. <laughs> he just wants to survive. Oz yep. is the same way. Okay. He is. He is. <laughs> he is. And and now he's got to keep Vic alive, even though Vic led him down. Which Vic? Come on. Okay. Yep. Simple. While running away drop the jewels okay the garais are just gonna pick up the jewels they already assume you they said while they were like found you they said did you take anything from the car exactly. so if you drop the jewels you could have you could have you could have gotten away and also planted what oz wanted you to plant so yeah. so I, I i thought that was a little like uh Come on, yeah. I, I could have thought what to do in that situation. Yeah. And and okay, I'm just gonna say this now mm -hmm. because I like to be honest with y'all. The stutter is not working for me. Mm. Because <laughs> I I mean we 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 have watched movies and shows with people who have stutters and and they can be done very well. And I'm blanking on the name of that movie um, about Queen Elizabeth's dad, who had a horrible stutter. Uh, oh, the speech, uh, speech? The, 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 the King Colin? speech. The King uh, speech. The, yeah, yeah the, with a Colin uh, Firth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Colin yeah. Firth. Uh, so, so I do to some extent. Anytime a character has a stutter, equate it to that movie. <laughs> Which is probably a horrible thing to that's, do. That's probably yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Because that, wasn't that an Academy Award uh, at least nominated, no, if not winning film? <laughs> it was, but come on, we all know Colin Farrell is going to get an Emmy for being Penguin. Come on. Yeah, yeah. But, but I just, I just there. The, he he doesn't. I don't know. There's something off. It feels very like an act. Yeah. And the joke may be on me. He may not have a stutter by the end of this season. He may not. He may, he may not. But something that you, yeah, something you said that while while you're giving your analysis there that that I that I I, I do worry about it, w that may or may not happen with this show because <laughs> some you know we have three scenarios in this episode. This week, where you know it starts off, where Oz is at Blackgate Prison, you know, with the Maronis, you know, trying to, you know, the Maronis you know, sorted out that he was behind Alberto's death, mm -hmm. um, and he had to do some quick thinking there. Mm -hmm. We had a second scenario where the, with the drop itself, um, and then of course later in the episode where he had to the, the plan at the funeral goes goes sideways and i'm worried maybe it's only oh, worries is too strong a word but i am but i do if this is going to be the structure for the season this right. will is i'm concerned that it will get predictable exactly exactly you you said that better than i was what i was trying to get at there there's as much as I'm I'm liking everything, there's an element of it where I'm just like, okay, this isn't catching me off. The nothing has is catching me off guard. The first episode, just the thought of from start to finish, we're following him trying mm -hmm. to get out of this. Like for some reason that that felt like a mini action movie that yeah. like an hour long it there were stakes while at the same time you're like this is a pilot episode so how mm -hmm. much stakes can there be but there's something very engaging about it and you're just watching colin farrell own the screen for yeah. 50, 
50 to 60 minutes. And then this episode, like they don't do that structure. And then you start to see some of these elements. And the more you think about it, the more it's just like, okay, well, I guess we're still in the superhero genre <laughs> to yeah. some extent. I mean, there it's not it's not a villain of the week that's happening no. right now. No. It's more of a how is Oz going to get out of this of being found out or mm -hmm. or like for any of the lies he is currently like wrapped up in. Yeah. Um, the biggest one b being that he shot Alberto, of course. Right. Yeah. But uh, so so is that going to happen every week? And how long is that sustainable? And also, right. like, you just took out one predictable um, procedural element of your classic superhero show and replaced it for another. But, like, it's still there. It's still a MacGuffin of some yeah. sort. Like, yeah. Yeah, call it by a different name. It still is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm hopeful, you know, and we're only on episode two, and maybe as think, you know, now that we, now that as we've ended this episode, Oz and Sophia are on, you know, quote unquote, on the same team, you know, you know, and I love the, and I do appreciate the way that they set that up, you know, in the middle of the episode, there where they had the conversation and especially when you have you know with with his, about the mother and you know him taking yep. him to his first concert and stuff and and and, and you know and, and then throwing in the scene too with his mom um you know that she's still alive but then whenever he was talking to Sophia you know he says she's actually dead um so you know so you know so I was wondering how how the mother was playing into all this but then when he was telling that story in the middle of the episode, and then when we get to the end of the episode, and he says, "Let's dance," it all that that one to me was like that's where I was like, "Yeah, this is where I'm really liking this show because I like the, the connectivity that they're doing with the storytelling here." Um, so hopefully, as I said, I'm concerned about the, the the structure. I'm hoping that now that they have gotten that, you know, we've gotten the the, the plate, the pieces on the board moved to this point. How how will things sort of unfold as as he and Sophia work together to you know take down for for her taking down the Falcons you know with the, with the and then of course Oz you know pitting the Falcons and a and a Mar Sal Maroni against one another you know to, to create that gang war so at the end of the day after all the death settles he's gonna you know we know he's gonna end up on top so. I, I, I'm hoping that the next few weeks we'll, we'll, we'll be getting past these situations where Oz is in these situations where his plans go sideways and, and because, you know, Vic didn't do X, Y, or Z. And, um, you know, so we don't fall into that predictable trap. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so too. Um, but um, we, we shall see. I, yeah. um, I, it's, We'll see if it just it just continues, even if it gets a little predictable. If it, if if we're still eating good by the end of this month, um, yeah, yeah. But but before before we leave, um, because I forgot about this, but did did you watch Last of Us two trailer? I for, I wanted to. I I just haven't had time. <laughs> yeah, but tell I. I so this is a situation. It's real reversal this time, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> usually, yeah. usually it's the it, other way around. <laughs> it is. It is because, I, yeah, I, I'm already pretty much aware of what's going to happen. But, yeah. um, I this is a really good trailer because, mm -hmm. um, spoiler alert. You don't hear anything from Ellie, and you don't hear anything from Jill. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are lines from a character who we don't know about yet. I'm pretty sure um but and she's clearly talking to joel but you don't hear anything and um and then it's just basically a montage of clips that are going to be um of scenes throughout the show of the season um and and i've heard some theories everyone's real anxious i'm just you know i said it while we were watching the first season and i'll say it now there's a shot like right at the beginning 
where Ellie is going through the doors and you see and they open and you see Jackson. And again, I didn't necessarily play the games, but I've seen a lot from the games. And mm-hmm. I was just like, whoa, <laughs> that's <laughs> Jackson. I get it. Um, and and yeah, I'm the the showrunners have come out and said though that that allows people to do theory spiraling um even more about what what season two will be because mm-hmm. I believe it's a shorter season than season one. A yeah. B yeah. they have said they don't even know if they can fully tell the story mm-hmm. in a season three. So IE we might get a season four. Yep. And and so I'm I'm getting excited for season two to go back um to just just to see like I I think that's what they've done a very good job of of even if you know some things that will happen or if you know from start to um start to finish what happens in the second game there's this big element of but how do they do that like you how do you and and the first game arguably a lot easier (laughs) the second game is a bit harder um so so we 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 shall see um, yeah. but I was, I was leaning towards not clicking on the trailer and then I was just like, oh, I'm going to watch the trailer. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I did. I, I hope not to watch another one. Um, but I, I am definitely, it reminded me a lot of the first trailer I saw for season one. Oh, okay. Okay. To an extent where, where there were scenes where I was like, I remember that I, yeah. That could be that. And there was also just there, there was just like, okay, we're starting something and it's like, mm-hmm. we're continuing something. So yeah, I just wanted to leave us on that note that season two of the last of us is coming and we're yeah. all excited. We're all, yeah. I, yep. Early, uh, I think it was early next year. I don't, I don't think we got the exact date yet, but we do, we do know it's uh, probably be the first quarter of uh, 2025. So Yeah. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on X at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever your podcast. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.